Welcome once again. The road to Government House in Oka Anambra State is starting on a thorny note. The four major political parties are done with their governorship primaries, but there are internal disputes in all but one. The rule in all progressive Congress, uh, of course, uh, Abga uh, um, has uh, Chukuma Soludo as a candidate, but a section of the party say he has been suspended. Two candidates were elected by two factions of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and most of the aspirants who ran on the All Progressive Congress say there was no primary, even as the party announced Andy Uba as its candidate. Only the Young People's Party, where Senator Ifan Uba won unopposed, is free of contention. We're joined this morning by a former politics um, a reporter who is now a lecturer of mass communication at the Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka. Dr. Odogo Odogo. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. All right. I want to start with, um, yes, thanks for joining us. I want to start with, you know, your views on the um, crisis, the ups and downs with regards to governorship primaries. It, it seems to have affected every party except uh, the YPP. The PDP has two candidates. The APC has their internal crisis. And, of course, the APGA has, has their own internal crisis. What would you describe as, you know, what's going on in, Ab in Anambra State? Well, because of the all communication, I don't know if I had you well, but I think you are talking about the crisis in the party primaries. Yes. If that is what you are talking about, and uh, I tell you, there's no primary election in Nigeria so far, no matter how manipulated it is with that crisis. This morning, the uh, All Progressive Band Alliance issued a statement asking the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressive Congress to cancel their primaries. But we should know that even that APOGA that is calling for cancellation of other primaries, that their own primaries are against by even people contesting in that. So there is no free and fair primaries as far as Nigerians and residents of a number of states is concerned. But to them, the political party members, there is there was a free and fair primary. So it's neither here nor there, depending on who is doing it. Those who the primary favored think it was free and fair. Those who did not favor think it was not free and fair. Okay. So it's different shows for different people. So, Mr. Odogo, what's your reaction to uh, Chris Singigi um, when he said that uh, elections are not held in the APC and that it should be cancelled? And remember that Anduba won overwhelmingly with over 200,000 uh, votes in the APC. The point here is who announced the results of Anduba winning the election? The statutory body that meant to survive the election, the governor of the day, announced it. So who is that person saying that there was no a primary election? And as I said earlier, in Africa primary election, those people who are aspirants kicked against the process. In PDP, some people kicked against the process and even conducted their own primary. That led to two emergence of uh, candidates. So the APC one will not be different. Okay. Um, I, I want to still st uh, talk about the APC. Um, primaries. It says the um, uh, delegates, you know, about 350,000 delegates voted, um, of course, uh, and uh, Andy Uba became um, elected as, a, as its candidate. Um, but if you remember in 2017, the governor of the state, Willie Obiano, won the election with about 234,000 votes. So is there any controversy or is, uh, you know, anything weird about seeing how the APC delegates alone with up to 350,000 when the whole of the governorship election in 2017 was won with 230,000? You know, in governorship election, it's a different ball game. So many things come into play. So many people are afraid of even coming out to vote. Because of that, uh, there are so many people that are disenfranchised. And due to the INEC regulation of voting time and hour, time of coming, time of application, and time of voting. But this party primary is open. There was no time of this, time of this. Because as I said here, that you know, at some 
area where that is uh, trending on social media. So what I'm trying to say is this. Parties in different ways. Uh, okay, let me use the APC that did their own direction. In all the ways, did their selection of who their candidate is going to be. And therefore, if the APC as a party has over 500,000 members, why should that be a problem? The problem would have been if they don't have up to 500,000 members in Anambra, but if they claim to have more than that in Anambra, and the people that uh, gave victory to whoever that is claiming to be candidate is 350,000. What's the business about that? There's no controversy. Because party primary is a different thing for members of the political party. And they're not afraid of anybody disempathizing them or anybody humiliating them or guarding them or fighting or shooting them. But in that last governorship election, remember, IPOB announced that people should not come out and vote. People are already afraid. There was so much policing. People were afraid. So many people didn't come out to vote. So those few people who came out to vote, they did three to whoever that won the election once there was a spread. Mr. Odogu, um, yes, I want us to, to take a look at um, the two brothers, you know, in this governorship race now, the Ubas going okay. head to head in these elections and you know, talking about Anduba and uh, Ugo Chukuba. Um, I want yes. us to analyze, you know, each of them on you know their political acumen and basically how I don't know how you see it. Would you say uh, politics has really divided their their relationship? What the, sorry, the last thing you said. Can you hear me, Mr. Odogu? Yes, I'm hearing you now. I'm asking you to help us analyze the political acumen of the two brothers who are going head to head in the okay, governorship elections. Okay, 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 okay. You know the Oba dynasty. Is a blessing and it's a cause. So some people is a blessing, some people is a cause. But that's not our business. It's their business. There are three brothers through political maverick. And Chris Uba, who is known as a godfather in a number of policies, and uh, is in support of his brother, Senator Ugutupo Uba. And declared him winner in his own factional PDP. Now, Andy Uba, Senator Andy Uba, is the candidate of APC. If Andy can twist the hands of Senator Chris Ngige, George Morgalo, and all those other people to clinch the ticket of APC with the announcement of the APC National Working Committee. And the announcement of the person, the, the team that came to survive it, the uh, deputy governor of uh, those streets. What do you think? Chris Uba was able to manipulate a section of his party and elect his brother. Ugotuku is a very calm person. He's not a political maverick. He is a new fight in politics, even though whatever he has gained politically was because of his brothers. You can compare Andy and Ugotuku. Andy is a political giant. Andy has contact and connection. Andy has food matters. Even though, to some, he should be blamed for one thing or the other. But that is their own headache. As far as politics is concerned, people are talking about their selfish interest. Mm. And that selfish interest, with their, their, their cohort, can take them to anywhere. To the tackling of the matter. We are not interested in... in, in, in what Anambra said people will be saying in the next few months to come. But as we stand today, based on your question, Andy is unbeatable in that Maverick family because Chris is still contending with the PDP factor. To go to over that he's handed over the ticket, it's still a subject of controversy between him and uh, Val Ogibo, who emerged in the other Faction. factional PDP Buddha Pramarek. But Andy single handedly beat many aspirants, political giants like Senator Chris Miguel. In fact, it is a shame that Senator Chris Miguel is complaining. 
complaining about what Andy, just Andy alone did to him, when he has been instrumental since 2003, or before, in all the political brouhaha, in AP, MPP, APP, whatever they call it, to APC. I could remember when God win his demo, nearly beat him down in an election primary, and he manipulated it. God win his demo, shattered the demo. And, and read. Nobody listened to him, and he took it. Okay, so Mr. So Mr. Ojogo, Mr. Ojogo, I, I I need to ask you, you know, concerning you know just how much influence um, you mentioned that um, Andrew Ba has in uh, Imo in Anambra State, and we know that Abga is ruling party there. So when you look at the ruling party um, Abga and um, Andrew Ba's uh, political connections. Um, what do you think it's going to be regarding Soludo and um, Andy? You know, if, in politics, if it becomes a, a, a two-horse race between both of them. In politics, there are many strengths and foes. Andy is of the ruling party at the national level. Really. And national level wants to take over an umbrella by all means. Now, Apoga is the ruling party in the state. And Obiano is always dancing to the tone of the federal government for the ruling party at the national level. So, if given under free and fair election, neither APOGA nor APC will take it. I don't know the party that will take it. Hmm. But if it's not under free and fair, how can you compare the federal might with the state might when the governor is always in support of the whatever national is doing? I have supported them all through. Oh, well, um, so, what are we uh, looking at? It's, it's clear that the connection he has to be able to tweet their hands and take the ticket is able to give him governorship of a number of states. But under free and fair, Val Ozibo, Soludo, Professor Suma Soludo, and Uba, and whoever that is coming up from any other party. It will be a big challenge because these are people that Anambra people love and cherish. No matter from the prison you are viewing them, they are loved by some sections of the society. They are hated by some sections of the society, especially when religious politics is at play. Okay, right. so... I, 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 well, I think we're about to wrap up, so I just wanted to you know, ask if, um, what the mood of the Anambra uh, people is like. Um, the Uba... Um, dynasty, like you've mentioned, has been in uh, Anambra politics for, for many, many, many years. Uh, do you think the Anambra people are maybe looking for a change and, you know, Chukuma Soludo might be, you know, just a breath of fresh air? Does it sound that way around uh, the Anambra electorate? It's not what the people wish that normally happen in politics. If we wish that horses beggars my rights, we may wish whatever we want. But the politicians will do whatever they want, they wish. And the courts will uphold it. Look at human state and what's happening there. You see what people wanted? So tell me, there's no, no it's neither here or there. What we are saying is this. If the system, if the, the establishment should do their job, things will be better and politics will be done better. Because if I make, those will do to be fine. Because due to the, the, the uh, other establishments responsible for election matter in Nigeria do their job, everything will go well. But when a situation, when under three and four election, everyone knows who, who will win the election, and the three lights somebody is announced, and the cause will oppose it, even oppose somebody that didn't be participate or was the fault in an election. Okay, Mr. Odugo, last question from me. Do you think the Southeast crisis uh, is likely to affect the conduct of the polls in November this year? Sorry? Do you think the Southeast, you know, agitations right now is likely to cause any security concern for the elections in November? If the Southeast is... The agitations of IPOB, all the agitations IPOB. in the Southeast, do you think that's likely to affect security you know people voter apathy for the election no 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 you see the problem of ipod the, the problem of federal government 
if the federal government didn't go to arrest the young man, all these things wouldn't have happened. They gave him strength, they gave him power, they gave him uh, the morale. And you know, youth, when they see an, an, uh, somebody that, that can brave up, they follow him. That's just that. If they didn't give powers that he and the candidate didn't have to him, he wouldn't have been a champion they made him to be. So now, they equally prescribe IPOD, making them to look as warriors, making them to look as uh, bulldogs, which they are not. If they had ignored them and used some diplomatic measures, this thing wouldn't have happened. And uh, when we come back to the question, IPOD is not a problem in the elections in South East or in the security of South East. But well, uh, well. the way the police and military are going about it, embodies them. Um, Mr. Odogu, <clears throat> Mr. Odogu, I asked you this question because we know that we know how basically the Southeast was shut down a few weeks ago because of an IPOB sit at home order. So if yeah. in the eventuality that we have an announcement or a pronouncement of a sit at home order on election day, so isn't that likely to affect turnout? This sit at home is an annual thing. They do it every year. Yeah, but and you, 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 you earlier mentioned, uh, Mr. Ndogo, you earlier and mentioned remember, the reason... When they had power to change the government, because if somebody like me was in IPOB, and that I, I happened to advise them, what they should have done is to register for the voters and vote massively, and then throw whoever they want to be their governor or whoever they want to be anything. Now oh. they don't have voter card. How can they disrupt the election? Mm -hmm. And the November election has nothing to do with IPOB. Yeah, but you you, like you had plan. earlier mentioned that the reason whatever, whatever. you had earlier mentioned so the I reason Willie Obiano. Hold on, Mr. Odogu. You, you mentioned earlier the reason Willie Obiano scored. Um, you know, or the voting numbers in 2017 were so low was mostly because of the agitations and uh, the IOPOB and some of the other And voter apathy, yes. You know, <laughs> so, so why is that different now? Why, why, are the, why is your, or are your views different now I concerning these elections? I said the are not elected. That was what I said. They had chances. Chances of controlling the government they won. That time, if they had said every woman, go and register, or every IPOB member, because they have them in, in, in thousands, they would have gone and registered, secured the vote, and turn whoever they want to be the governor of Panambra State. But they didn't do that. They're, they're oh, rather threatening. Now, people <laughs> have seen that their threat didn't take effect on that election. So they are got to come out now and vote. But the problem now is not actually coming out to vote, but with their votes cut. Mm. All right. Okay, um, Mr. Odogu, what do you, you know, mm. when you look at the conduct of the primaries this weekend you know it seems Sorry? that only the ypp uh candidates ifan yuba um has been in the clear other parties are still you know seem to be dealing with one internal crisis or the other apc pdp and abga so what do you think might be the defining moments um for these um political parties uh, do you foresee you know them scrapping these uh, primaries results, redoing another primary. Do you foresee, uh, you know, court cases coming up here? Because, you know, people have, you know, threatened to take this whole issue to court concerning uh, Soludo, uh, saying basically that Willie Obiano is forcing him, um, is forcing Soludo on Abga. So what do you think might be the defining moments regarding uh, the primaries in Anambra State? What do I think the... What do you think might be the defining moments in the primaries in, in Anambra? There's nothing like that because uh, the problem has been no free and fair election. If the elections will be free and fair, I would better tell you the defining factors because we know them. But in this situation, there's no defining moment. Let me give you an example. You mentioned the Ifan Yoba. Ifan Yoba won in a party unknown. And if not because he had the power, he had the muscle, he had everything going for him at that period, it would have been impossible because that election was nearly hijacked. I'm a witness. I was a witness. I didn't participate actively. It was nearly, but the court in Fani 
had that territory, the area where the election was not accumulated, at his strong base, he was able to secure it. And luckily for him, the court was held it for him. But this time around, you can't say this, and it's too early to under, understand the gimmick. Hmm. Because, yes, UDP has no candidate, for, as far as I'm concerned now, until I next day is the candidate. All right. Okay. Um, Odogo, Odogo, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, of course, so we hope that we can connect with you again before the elections uh, start proper. Thank you very much. Thank All you. Right. All Thank right, you. so, yes. A couple of things just didn't, you know, um, well, I think that's why I kept pushing for that question. A couple of things just didn't add up for me. If you look at the figures for the other parties, Abga is the, you know, the, the big party in Anambra State today. I don't think they pulled up to 350,000 delegates. Uh, so how the ABS was, a, was able to pull 350,000 delegates. And talking about um, how the election results was announced um, in some hotel. Yeah. So it really... It just didn't add up. Yes, there's um, really lots that we need to, you know, find out really about the elections. You know, of course, there are people who have come out to say these elections should be counted in the APC, in the PDP. Mm. So let's just see how it unfolds in the next few days. If they'll be counting all those primaries, even though I doubt that the person of Andrew Uba will want that to happen, seeing how he overwhelmingly won with over 230,000 votes. But we'll see. We would see. Let's all take right. a break here and we'll return to discuss this pressing issue right now in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria um, regarding the Niger Delta Avengers and their threats to begin to destroy all facilities in the country. Do stay with us.